Hello, this is David with entry number, I have no idea, 1000 something. I apologize again, it's been quite some time since the last the last entry, but uh, I guess that's the way it has to be. Uh, things have continued to progress uh, relatively well. Um, you know, it's, it's strange, there's something I really want to talk about, but before I talk about it, it's strange to um, kind of witness inner office politics in the sense that they are in every sense of the word meaningless but somehow somehow are paramount it seems in their importance um, I won't presume to understand why but it just feels like it just feels like that to me um, you know I'm going to uh, adjust this light hopefully oh, looks like I shouldn't be adjusting the light <laughs> um, let's move it up here so well that's not gonna work there we go there we go I just had to reinstall the bulb a bit um, oh the light is right in front of the camera, so that's why the lighting might shift around a little. Um, um, I wanted to talk about something in particular today, and that is the kind of an interesting observation I've made. Um, and, you know, I've kind of known this for a while, but I wanted to say how how strange it is to be someone who doesn't really drink alcohol a lot in a sit in a in a country that is almost defined by the consumption of alcohol and it was to a much higher degree and much greater extent in Korea but even in Japan you really cannot function socially without consuming alcohol it, it's a very curious thing and within the Japanese people sure there are a number that don't uh, consume alcohol but if you are a member of the foreigner community here that number is pretty much I would say less than 1% and to be in that group to be in a group of less than 1% is is fascinating in many ways it it is extremely bad for any kind of social interaction you want to have um, and I'm not sure if it's a bad thing I know for me it's a bad thing but you know if I want to be cynical it's it's kind of putting alcohol on such a pedestal that you cannot have fun without without taking in alcohol and you know it's a real shame I think because um, there's a whole lot of discussion that can be had there's a whole lot of serious ideas that can be broached uh, without alcohol and it seems that um, if I want to be in, an, in a situation where I can be social and not consume alcohol I have to be you know I guess I can't because to be honest I don't think there's really one foreigner here in the city that I live in that doesn't drink alcohol I mean that seriously I mean that seriously it's such a strange it's such a strange thing to to have this sort of um, barrier barrier to entry you know I, at this point it's like I feel like why should I capitulate why should I capitulate to 
to something that I don't want to do, really. It's a real, it's a real weird, it's a real bad situation to be in, I'll be honest. Um, the other part, part of it is that because this is summer here, I'm not getting a whole lot of sleep. Um, I wake up very early, around 4.30 or earlier every day. Um, there's been a couple days, a few days so far that I've woken up in the 3 o'clock hour. So it's been pretty, that's been pretty tough. And, um, you know, when you put that on top of, um, not drinking, you get, you run into like a very interesting situation where you, I have a need, I have a want, I have a very strong desire to socialize with peers, but it comes with caveats and apparently those caveats are unacceptable, are completely unacceptable here. And it is to, a, I think, a very high degree painful. It's very painful. You know, people my age shouldn't have these kind of thoughts. People 10 years older than me don't have these kind of thoughts. People maybe even 20 years older than me don't have these kind of thoughts. You know, I know a lot of people in their 40s these days who live like they're in their 20s. And to some extent, that's fine. In some ways, it's fine. But in other ways, it's quite sad. Um, but, you know, I, I don't feel like I have... Peer pressure has never worked on me. Peer pressure will never work on me because I am an independent thinker. And the cost of independence is, I guess, being social. It's in a very difficult place to be, I'll be honest. It's a very difficult place to be. As humans, we all have a desire to be in within peer groups. And what I don't like is the fact that you have to capitulate to be in a peer group here. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. And because I have very strong morals, it's a, it, you know what it is? It's, you know, it's a, it's a fucking uh, self-fulfilling prophecy or like a zero-sum game where I want something and in, and I want to live, I want something and in order to get that, I have to pay some another price. And so in order to, in order to, to maintain something, you know, it, it's equilibrium. It's an equilibrium. And I am just stuck in the situation. I can't get out of it. You know, it's, it's fucking ridiculous that someone has to completely compromise themselves in order to, in order to be accepted into a peer group. It's I think I think that is totally wrong, especially when it comes to something as as like alcohol, consuming alcohol. It's really quite frustrating to be honest. And you know, I'm not planning on really unless I find like a certain particular situ myself in a partic particular situation, I don't really think I have to be doing any of that so you know that's it for now I it, it's really frustrating to be honest it's very 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 frustrating and there's really no there's really no particular answer that I can find that I can imagine but at the end of the day it's not a huge it's not a huge deal because I'm pretty fine living independently because I did it for so long in Korea but it would be nice but it's just impossible. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk with you later. Bye.